Good morning, Living Word Lutheran Church. It's good to be worshiping the Lord with you today and gathering together as congregation of believers. Just a few announcements for you. Uh, first is this week we've got our online VBS for our kids and our youth. Uh, we're excited for that opportunity to be able to continue to challenge our kids and uh, invest in their lives spiritually. Uh, for the families who are either watching online or are here, uh, Beth and Joni and Mark have put together these VBS crafts packets that they're handing out. And uh, on our church website, you'll have a whole bunch of puppet shows and Bible lessons and memory verses and songs. And so we're excited for you to be able to partake in that. Uh, also today, we have our missionaries with us from Paraguay, Matthew and Edna Abel. And uh, Matthew will be sharing God's word a little bit later with us. We're excited for that opportunity as well. With that, then, we'll open up our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship is from Psalm 119, verses 41 through 42. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have an answer for him who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Let's stand for our opening hymn number 262, How Firm a Foundation. service. Uh, Dave and Cindy Shakes said we're here for that. And so continue to be praying for Dave. Uh, his body is getting very weak and um, he has been having some pain and some restless nights. So continue to be praying for, for Dave, especially during these days in his battle with cancer. Uh, any other prayer requests that we can be bringing before the Lord this week? Yeah, Leanne. Strong body and a strong mind, and he's 
of Jesus. So I just want to thank you because I want to appreciate you. Yeah. And last week we had the funeral service for Don Dillon and we're thankful for our brother in Christ who's now with the Lord. And uh, we don't grieve as those who have no hope, but we're thankful that he's in a, a better place with the Lord. So thanks for the update on that. Yes, Sabrina. Okay. Can you say that Veronica's what? Her road test. Her road test. Oh, okay. Veronica is having her road test, so we will definitely be praying for her and for us. So, okay, sounds good. Veronica, let us know how that goes. Okay, good. Anyone else today? Yes, Cheryl. Um, prayer request for my two grandsons during this time of COVID isolation. Okay. Uh, my sixth grandson, he's in Arizona, and and the other boy, he's uh, going to be going to U of M school, and he is going to start training to work in a new quick shop that's opening in August. So okay. So pray for both of them that they can get the jobs and get, be able to earn some money now that the economy is opening up. Yeah, be praying for Cheryl's grandkids as they look to get back to get some employment. That'll be good. Good. We'll also be praying, Mark, SI, your hand there. We'll be praying for online VBS this week. And again, just to continue and encourage those of you who know to check out the information that's on the website. We're excited to be able to share those resources. And thank you to everyone who's made that happen, and all of the hours of videotaping and everything to get that ready. Let's go to the Lord now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow before you today. We're thankful that you are a God who, who loves us, who cares about the daily things of our life. And so, Lord, we, in, we bring these things before you as you invite us to do. We pray today for the youth and children of this church. We think about our uh, online vacation Bible school that's starting this week, and we are excited for that as a resource to train up our children in the way they should go. We pray, Lord, that you would bless that ministry this week. We also pray for uh, Veronica. She's going to be taking her road test. We pray for wisdom and, and caution for her as she is getting behind the wheel and driving for that. Allow uh, that to go well for her. We also continue to pray for Cheryl's uh, grandsons as they look to get back to work. And with the economy starting to reopen again, Lord, we pray that you would provide for them and their needs. And also that you'd be providing for the needs of our congregation members, Lord, who are looking for getting back to work, or uh, continuing to, to seek financial aid during this time. We also pray for the Dillons, Lord, especially for Laverne, that you would continue to be comforting her, walking alongside of her. Uh, we praise you for the life of our brother Don, and we're thankful, Lord, that uh, even though he is away from us, that he is home with you, and we continue to rejoice in that. We also pray for our brother Dave. Dave Shake says he battles with this cancer that he has. And it seems like, Lord, his body is weakening um, and his strength is failing. We commend him to your care. And we ask, Lord, that you would lift up his eyes also to not just the blessings of this life, but a blessing of a life with you forever. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you would ease the pain that he has in his body. Lord, we also thank you for our missionaries that we have with us today. We thank you for, for Matthew and his family. We pray that you would continue to be uh, opening up the doors expanding the, the outreach of the gospel there in Paraguay. Lord, we commend that to your care. And all of our mission work, Lord, that you would continue to allow people around the world to come to faith in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue in our service today, we'll continue with our scripture reading. Ask for the congregation to please stand out of respect for God's word. John, come on up. I just saw John in the back. We'll have John read. The Old Testament this lesson is this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verses 19 through 21. Reading in Jesus' name. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people 
a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The epistle lesson is from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 8 through 17. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. The gospel lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 12 through 14. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Here ends the scripture reading. Thank you so much, John. Congregation may be seated. One of the things that uh, is a high priority for me as a pastor is that we wouldn't only just know what we're doing in the church, but why we're doing those things. And so uh, over the last weeks, we've been doing this series called Temple Talks. And because we have a mission presentation today, I thought it would be good to just talk about why we have missionaries come and do presentations. Uh, that's something that's pretty uh, intertwined with the culture of our church. We have probably somewhere between five or six missionaries every year that come and share about the work of the Lord in different countries that they're serving in. And the reason why we do that is we want to hold very much in front of us that the church of God is not just contained here at Living Word. We believe that God is doing work in ministry all around the world, uh, in South America, in North America, in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, all around the world, God is having his word go forth. And that's a really important thing to remember, that the church is bigger than just us, that outside of these four walls, God is doing a work. And it's also something that excites us as we hear about the ministry of God continuing on and being proclaimed, maybe in places where we would never go. You may never get a chance to go to Paraguay or China or Africa or wherever, but we have an opportunity to partner with the ministries that are. And so we're really excited uh, today to have Matthew and Edna Abel here uh, sharing with us about the work of God in South America and grateful that we as a church are part of that. Matthew is one of the uh, missionaries that we support every month. And uh, some of the offering today, if you are designated to LWLC missions, will go towards supporting their mission work in Paraguay. Uh, we're excited as a congregation that we get to be part of that. And so as you hear about the work there, uh, as you see some of it out on the table, uh, you also are having an ownership in that work of God in South America. And that's pretty cool. And so we're thankful as a church to not only support missions, but to hear about that here at our church, the work that God is doing around the world. In the back, uh, where our offering normally is, there are little cards there that you can put money in for uh, AFLC World Missions. And if you want to just write a check to Living Word, put LWLC Missions, we'll make sure all of that gets forwarded to uh, the ABLES. If you have any questions about that, you can ask uh, um, our church president or myself after the service. As we continue on then, in, in light of that, let's uh, join together in worship with our offertory response. Thank you. 
we give thee but thine own. Before Pastor Abel comes and shares God's word with us, I invite you to stand and sing hymn number 540, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. Let's stand and sing. Congregation may be seated. Pastor Matthew will call on you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we did a special number um, between services, and we'd like to repeat that again. It's a song about Jesus being not only God and King, but being our friend. And that our relationship with Jesus Christ can bring us joy and peace. And joy and peace that can only come through a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're going to sing in Guarani, which is the language of Paraguay. And then we'll sing in Spanish, which is the other language of Paraguay. Oh, my. 
Testing. There we go, we're on. Good morning. Um, I've had an opportunity to converse with a number of you. Um, it's fun to meet some new people and see some, um, I was gonna say some old faces. Um, see faces that are recognizable from old, right? Uh, like, like these two young bucks over here. Um, it's been a pleasure to work in Paraguay. It's been a pleasure to serve the AFLC. Before we get into God's word, I just want to get a couple announcements out of the way. We have prayer cards in the back. They're just a picture with our names and our country map on it. The idea of that is that you take one and you put it somewhere where you'll see it and you can pray for us. So please take one of those or two, um, however many you need. Um, there are also some booklets that are called the Family Album. It's got all the AFLC missionaries in a little bio. So if you want to be informed on, on all the missionaries, take one of those. We have a clipboard for you to sign up if you want to be on our newsletter um, list. And once a month, about, we send out a, a newsletter sharing what we've been up to, what we're looking forward to, what you can be praying for. It's a good way to be involved and be connected. Um, so yeah, please check that out. Sign up for our emails, take our picture, and um, be connected. Also wanted to thank you uh, personally for your support. This church has been supporting us, has been part of our ministry in that way. I also wanted to bring a word of gratitude from my parents, Paul and Becky Abel. I was planning to show their video in the middle time, but uh, I, we ran out of time, I guess. <laughs> But you can find these, these videos that give information about us at aflcworldmissions.org. Um, find our names. There's usually a link to our video right there. And you can get a better picture of what we've been doing in ministry, um, where we're at, and things. So yeah, we invite you and ask that you would do a little bit of homework to get, um, get yourself informed about our work. It would be very beneficial to... Um, our unity as a church, as a church body. So um, that being said, let's come to God's word. Romans chapter 10 was our epistle reading today. The title of my message is One Good Thing You Can't Do in Heaven. What's one good thing you don't get to do in heaven? Like, well, isn't heaven all good things, right? How is there a good thing we can't do in heaven? Let me tell you. You cannot bring an unbeliever to faith in heaven because judgment has happened. The time of repentance has gone and there will be only believers. We'll be a great, big, happy family. But one good thing you can only take advantage of on this side of eternity is evangelism. It's preaching the gospel. You wouldn't want to miss out on a good thing, right? We hate missing out. So please don't miss out on this one good thing. That's what this message is focused around today. And um, I want to come back to our text here and point a few things out to us. Um, Verse 4 of chapter 10 says this, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. And then up in verse 8, the word is near you, it is in your mouth, it is in your heart, that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Just to there for now. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and you, we pray that this morning as we Think about your word as we meditate on the implications of it that you would speak to our hearts, that you would strengthen our faith, 
that you would um, bring to us assurance of salvation and resolve in living for you. So Lord, we pray that these miracles might happen today as we are gathered here. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ is the end of the law for everyone who believes. I would like to point out a couple things about this gospel that we believe. There is a universal nature of this gospel. Christ died for all. Christ on the cross satisfies for all sins of all times, past, present, and future. The salvation that Christ earned on the cross is available to everyone. That is really good. That is good news because that gives me assurance. Can I be saved? Yes. How do I know I can be saved? Christ died and his death in payment for our sins was enough for my sins. This universal nature of the law brings assurance to you. You can know that you can be saved because Christ died for you. Christ did not just die for a few. He did not just die um, for one or another. He died for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. That verse comes right after Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus about Moses lifting up the snake in the desert that all who would look to that snake in faith would be healed. And he said, in the same way, the Son of Man will be lifted up for God so loved the world. That's this, this message that we hold to. Um, I want to ask you a question today. You can answer to me loud and clear. What brings you to church on a Sunday morning like today? What's, what are some of the motivations that bring you to church? Praise to praise God. God. To hear the word of God. The love of what was that? The love. the love of Christ compels us. Fellowship, Fellowship to learn from his word. Nobody coming to church to spy on the pastor? <laughs> you gotta keep an eye on him. Yeah, I, for comfort. So we have various motivations to come to church, but I would suggest that one of the main reasons we gather as church Sunday mornings all over the globe is to receive the gift of faith. Our text here says in verse 17, that faith comes from hearing the word of God. So as we hear the word of God, all, all your answers were good. We're not just a single motivation here for anything. Um, life is complex and it's good motivations. Maybe spying on the pastor, not such a good motivation, but, um, but you'd still hear God's word, right? But as God's word is proclaimed, as we hear God's word, God gives us faith. And so we come to church, we come together as believers to receive faith. Um, we're going to share in communion in a little bit. And in communion, Christ brings to us the faith we need to remain, the faith we need to, to persevere, the faith we need to believe in him. Um, like, like in Mark chapter 9, I believe, Lord, I believe, help me in my unbelief. So we receive faith. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. And um, what are the specifics of this word that, that we see in this text? It says that in verse nine, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Take comfort in this. You have this opportunity to confess the Lord in faith, to put your life before him and know that there is salvation for you. And so this is the message we hear, the message that brings faith to our lives. And it is a wonderful thing. It is great. And it is for you. So I, I want to declare this message loud and clear today. 
And I want you to hear it for yourself. This is important stuff. But the text continues. Verse 14. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? So this question is posed. If we walk it back, um, Paul is saying that we need to send people so that they can preach, so that people can hear. And as they hear, they can believe. And if they believe in what they heard, they can call on the Lord and be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But he walks it back. But how are they going to call? How are they going to believe? How are they going to hear? How are they going to preach? And this comes as our imperative to us today. It's like, what to do? What do we, what do, we do with this message that we have heard and we so cherish? This message that brings us life and security and peace and joy. Um, so I want to talk about evangelism. I want to talk a little bit about evangelism. It's a, it's a mystery to me how the church has not dominated the world yet, right? In, in all these 2,000 years of the growth and expansion of Christianity, we see waves of revival, waves of expansion, and then we see things like Europe who is, um, that is very post-Christian and churches are empty and Christianity isn't really an influence and the United States, which is rapidly moving in that direction, you're like, what is happening? How could this be? And so it's a, it's a quandary, it's a mystery to me as well. Um, but perhaps this message today um, could help us reverse this, could help us change the situation. Let me ask you, show of hands, who here has talked to a stranger in the past two months? Conversation with a stranger, um, supermarket, gas station, wherever you may be. Oh yeah, good, mo good majority of you. One or two people haven't talked to strangers, okay? Um, how many of you talked to this stranger about the weather? Weather, it's a good, you know, cashier. And yeah, it's a hot one today, huh? Did you hear about the storm that's coming in? Looked at the radar this morning. It looks pretty bad. We talk about the weather very easily with anyone because I think we assume that it applies to everyone, that the weather affects everyone, so it's common ground. It's easy to talk about something that affects us equally. Maybe not equally, right? The rain, the storm might affect a farmer more than it affects me, but uh, it affects us all in some way. Um, who here has had a conversation with somebody about the virus, the coronavirus, COVID? Uh, yeah, this mask thing, you know, now everybody's got to wear masks. How is that? Um, oh, well, what are the numbers? How many, you know, how many new cases? And we talk about that because it's, you know, it's around, it affects us all, and I think it becomes easy for us to talk about it. But we established this morning that Christ is the end of the law for everyone who believes. We established this universal aspect of the gospel, that Jesus Christ died so that all might have life. And so arguably, the gospel, the message of Christ, the message of repentance of sin and faith in Jesus Christ applies to everyone. And I would suggest much more than the weather and the coronavirus because it affects us eternally. And eternal is like a concept that's bigger than I can even grasp, right? Um, and so I think it's relevant. Maybe if, if we consider it relevant, we might be more willing to engage but I would like to give another hint of why it might be, uh, of how it might become easier for us to engage 
in, in evangelism, engage in talking about our faith. I, I wanna emphasize talking about our faith because we, we see in verse 17, faith comes from hearing the word of Christ. How will they believe and call unless they hear? Faith comes from hearing. We hear the word of God. You guys are here today because God's word has come to you and you've heard God's word and you've had a chance to believe and respond. Christ has called you through the proclamation of the gospel. So I've heard numerous times, preach the gospel always and if necessary, use words. I I think it's been attributed to like St. Francis or something. I don't know the context of this and I would hope it was a context of trying to say, put, you know, put your actions where your faith is um, and not the idea that you don't need to preach the word. You just need to be a good, you know, be a good Christian. As people see you, you know, going to church in the morning and being nice, the problem is that we don't have God's promise to bring faith to people by, you know, by just being nice people. Of course, we are called to you know, let our good deeds be seen before men that they might praise the Lord. Of course, we want to be consistent in the way we live with what we preach. Practice what you preach, right? But we end up practicing what somebody else preaches and we don't preach. Um, the gospel is a message to be heard. So your neighbor won't hear the gospel from you unless you open your mouth and proclaim it, unless you preach it, unless you engage in this conversation with intentionality to bring the message of the cross that people might know, that people might call and be saved. So it's a message. It's a message to be proclaimed. Well, consider the odds. Maybe we don't open our mouths because we don't want a bad reaction, a bad response. But what, what could happen? We could preach the gospel, open our mouth, talk to somebody about faith in Jesus, what we believe, what's most important in our lives, talk, about them, talk to them about the need for forgiveness of sins, and they might hear that, and the miracle of faith happens in their heart, and they believe and they are saved eternally. Would that be a good result? I think there's nothing more amazing in this life than to give the gift of everlasting life to someone. It's amazing, it's great, that's a win. You could open your mouth to speak about this message, to speak about this reality, and the person might be polite and listen to you and say, well, Nice, you believe what you believe, I believe what I believe, Um, have a nice day. Uh, uh, You know, it didn't hurt, but then you planted a seed. You proclaimed a seed that that can take root, that as other circumstances and other people in this person's life could bring this person to faith, eventually. Planting a seed, that's a good result, right? So that's a win-win. And what would be the other alternative? A person is rude, your neighbor starts to avoid you. <laughs> you, know, you come out and they're like, go back in, they close the blinds or something. Um, somebody might get into a heated discussion with you. Um, you might be blown off. And that would be perceived as bad. So win, win, lose. That's still like a 66% approval rating. It's pretty good. But I would like to suggest to us, to embolden us, that when we preach the gospel, when we open our mouths, that we are successful and it is good 100% of the time. You're like, well, I haven't had people, you know, I haven't had it be good 100% of the time. Well, look at what scripture says. 1 Peter 4.14 says, If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of God and glory rest upon you. Luke 6.22 and 23 says, Blessed are you when people hate you 
And when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man, Jesus, rejoice in that day, leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Two results of a negative situation. God's spirit and his glory rest upon you. You get to rejoice and be glad and leap for joy, for great is your reward in heaven. That's pretty positive. Um, another one, Luke 12, 8 through 12, Jesus says, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. So, you get the chance of acknowledging Jesus before men and he promises that he will acknowledge you before the angels of God. He'll say, no, that is my son. You get reassurance. You get reaffirmed in Christ's promise. And here in the same text, um, Jesus explains to his disciples and explains to us a little, a little secret here. He says, when they bring you before the synagogue and the rulers and the authorities, do not be anxious about how you should defend yourself or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. So, just like with anything in life, preaching the gospel, doing, practicing evangelism takes practice, okay? We get better as we do it, but I think we have this fear. We're like, well, what if I don't know what to say? What Jesus promises that as we have his Holy Spirit, that in that moment, the Holy Spirit will teach us what we have to say. The pressure's off. God is with you. God is with me. And so he'll teach us what we have to say that we don't have to be anxious about it. The Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour. So the other question is when. When is the right time? When is the right time? I've heard a lot of people talk about friendship evangelism. Oh, I'm befriending this person, you know, we're hanging out, we do things, and someday I'm going to preach them the gospel. Well, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We have today. I keep thinking, how would your friend feel? Your friend who comes to faith and finds that he can have joy and peace in life eternal in Christ who's known you for two years, and he says, now you're telling me this? Ne really? I, I could have died. <laughs> I, I could have known this years ago. Um, that's kind of evil. <laughs> it's kind of wicked. Um, of course, befriend people, but give them what you have that's most valuable. Um, when is the right time? There's a season for preaching. Um, and Paul tells Timothy about this in 2 Timothy 4. He says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Okay, there are two seasons, in season and out of season. And you can preach in both of them. So you don't have to worry. That question is solved. Leave it in the Lord's hands. Um, and he continues talking to Timothy and he says, as for you, be sober-minded, endure suffering, and do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. So I want to charge you here, church, as we have received faith and assurance forgiveness of our sins as we have this opportunity today to confess and reaffirm our faith and know that we are saved that we might not be hoarders of this that we might be bold and step out to witness I'm not friends with your neighbors I'm not going to speak to them I'm never going to meet them probably but you are your coworkers, the gospel message, faith comes by hearing. And if you were worried about what to say, you don't have to worry about that anymore. If you are worried that it might be negative, 
It's not, it's always positive. It's a win-win-win. They might be saved, you'll plant a seed, or you will gain the blessing of rejection for the name of Christ, and that is something to rejoice about. And I hope this perspective can help you to take a step of boldness in preaching the gospel. Because that's really what it takes. It takes some courage, it takes some boldness, and as we practice, we'll find out that it was really good, that that didn't hurt, that it was, you know, and maybe it did hurt. You know, the apostles, they all got killed for it. But as they were getting hurt, they were more affirmed of how good it was, and they were able to rejoice in that also and to rejoice in their sufferings. More than likely, in our context today, it's not gonna hurt, more than likely, but it could. You might face persecution, but that's also a positive. So be encouraged with this word today um, from the Lord. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, you will be saved. Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that has come to us. We thank you for the opportunity to be bearers of this message. And we pray, Lord, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would fill us with boldness, that you would fill us with encouragement as we proclaim the message of Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd forgive me for all the times that I have, I have not stepped out in faith, for all the times that I've chosen um, my comfort zone rather than proclaiming your message. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive us for so many times doing this. And help us, Lord, to seize these opportunities to preach with our mouths, with our words, this message that we believe. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation in us. And may we carry that with us wherever we go. Bless this congregation, bless this church, that they may fulfill their purpose here and abroad. Thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness in supporting missions and, and the proclamation of your word all over the world. And Lord, now bless them as they proclaim here in this area that they might fulfill their ministry as a church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Abel. Appreciate that word. Thank you for your mission work in Paraguay. And I uh, hope it's a good encouragement to you that uh, we all are God's missionaries where he's planted us. So continue to be message bearers and open up our mouths to the good news to proclaim. So we continue in our service and prepare for communion together. Join now hymn number 419, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain. <laughs> Impotent 
mute and blind. Hear the guilty free remission. Hear the troubled peace may find. Help this fountain will restore. He that drinks shall thirst no more. He that drinks shall live forever. Tis a soul renewing flood. God is faithful, God will never break his covenant of blood. Signed when our Redeemer died, sealed when he was glorified. Our service for Holy Communion continues in our hymnals on page 16. We invite you to draw together with me, confessing our need for Jesus together as a congregation in our prayer of repentance and confession that's found there. Holy and righteous God, merciful Father, we confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you above all things, nor our neighbor as ourselves, and are worthy, therefore, to be cast away from your presence, if you should judge us according to our sins." But you have promised, O Heavenly Father, to receive with tender mercy all repentant sinners who turn to you and with a living faith seek refuge in your fatherly compassion and in the merits of the Savior Jesus Christ. Our transgressions you will not regard nor count them against us. Relying upon your promise, we confidently pray that you would be merciful and gracious to us and forgive us all our sins. To the praise and glory of your holy name, amen. Created me a There are three things that we as Christians are called to believe in light of Jesus' institution of the Lord's Supper. And the first one from the words of Christ is that he is truly present with us as his words declare. Jesus says, this is my body which is given for you. This is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And so we take Jesus at his word that he is truly present with us as his words declare. The second thing that we're called to believe is from Jesus' words for the forgiveness of sins. We're called to believe that Jesus Christ bestows upon you his body and blood to confirm to you the forgiveness of all of your sins. And finally, we're called to believe, as Christ commands us, that this is for you. As he says, take and eat, drink of it all of you, and this do in remembrance of me. If you believe these words of Christ and do as he has commanded, then you have properly examined yourselves and may rightly eat Christ's body and drink his blood for the forgiveness of your sins. As a Christian church, we're also called to unite in giving thanks to Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for so great a gift to love one another with a pure heart and thus with the whole Christian church have comfort and joy in Christ our Lord. To this end, may God the Father grant you his grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also when he had eaten, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11 that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner is guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And so the call is for us to examine ourselves and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Let's join together now as a church family and taking communion together. If you remove the uh, plastic filaments on the top, you can take out the bread and then remove the purple one and you'll have the ability to uh, partake of the juice as well. Living Word Lutheran Church, this is a body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and eat. Living Word Lutheran Church, this is the blood of Christ which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who has now bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all of your sins, may strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, now and until everlasting life. May God's peace be with you today. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 205. Let's stand and sing, Give to Our God Immortal Praise. Number 205. Sent his son with power to save from guilt and darkness and the grave. Wonders of grace.
praise to God belong. Repeat His mercies in your song. After the service, uh, Pastor Abel and his family will be out here in the foyer uh, for you to visit with and ask any questions. I would encourage you to be able to do that. Uh, We're thankful again for you guys to come and to join us today. Receive now the Lord's benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his grace and peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.